Thank you very much. I love how James likes to try and hide his northernness, but when he says Tut the Desert, uh, is, uh, there's no getting around it, Rich. He also picks Raise Your Edge, where I you know. have a coach from Leeds and one of the players from Wakefield. So it's, he's definitely biased. He's, he's a UK <laughs> he's, biased he's person. He's still got his, his Yorkshireness in there. He tries to hide it that he is actually a posh boy. Yeah, not really. But not from us. <laughs> <laughs> Decent playing path to begin with. I like this one. We start over on the east and we head to the west diagonally across. And it pretty much cuts the map in half. So usual home locations for everybody. It should be a fair man's game. Mm. We say that. It all depends where the circle goes off. There's a problem for um, the guys going down to Impala and Porta Parisa. So we might see adjustments with uh, Desperados maybe clashing with DA or, or Kumasero. Kumasero was open, remember, um, the last two games based on the fact that I think it was Game of Legion that went there originally in game one. Uh, everybody's kind of uh, moved away, and now it looks like it's kind of gone to them. N47 have made the adjustment, so Valadil Mar instead of Impala for them. Uh, where have Desperado's gone? They are heading in the, the same Kumasera, direction. It was the same area where they, they pushed initially on, on day number one, game number one, ironically. Um, and we saw two teams here, and that's where DA was actually held up against them. Mm. DA's not there anymore. He touched an M47. Honestly, I thought they might have been able to go for that one. You can get the vehicles saying that they can be a little bit sparse, but... You'll have hard spawns and so on and so forth. <laughs> then again, there's no real... If it's open and it's an easy flight path, you might as well make life easy for yourself. The circle is actually quite favourable to them. It's on their side of the map. Again, main problem with this, it works the same way as if... We, have to, we, we kind of play it in theory as if the whole western embankment that was water, it's unplayable and denied area. Eventually, it's going to pull away from that cliff face because it's completely inaccessible terrain. These kind of circles... It can be a bit messy. Sometimes you get teams that like to go up and around and stick themselves up kind of off by the trailer park. But the main focus on that one will be just to the left of the crater fields. Between that, Pozo, uh, and the mountain ridge that runs down from the crater fields, you get a lot of circles in this area. So right now, Crow Crowd, they're good, but they won't want to share El Pozo with people. So they need to get in positions to kind of deny any entry points on there. But it's a damn big city to defend with four men. Yeah, absolutely. Crow Crowd... They're going to be happy with this one, though. This is... I've I, I got to think... I'm just wondering if this is their first map they've actually managed to get to El Pozo. Because the plane pass... No, though, uh, there was um, one of the maps yesterday, right? They managed to get there. But uh, they've had to make quite a few adjustments. Uh, along with FaZe Clan, obviously FaZe were down south uh, a couple of games yesterday as well. So here is Crow Crowd. Had a good game, good day, I see. You know, yeah, they got the two wins. Yeah, you know, the last one of the day, they only got two kills out of it. But it's 10 placement points, and that's the main part, 12, 12 points. It's not, not the greatest win. It's not really what a win that you want, you know. But th there's nothing else they could do from that but, uh, that that point of view. If we went north, it would have been Team Liquid's game. If we went south, it was Crow Crow's game, and that's how it worked out. And you've got to just take it. If if, if we gifted a win like that, you've got you to take it. Oh, look, but if, if that would have been the last day... That have oh, they made loved it. it. They made it to PGC. <laughs> yeah. In theory, it would have done it because they're yeah. in the top six and, and beyond that is is where these teams are now looking for. It's um, where where do you go from here, Rich? Like what what position? Because it's it is hard to, to obviously rotate. Do you, do you go for like a big wide rotate? Think of the, think of uh, Entis old rotates. They used to go really high and wide and come in and right up the back. Say even Alicantero way, something up there. Where are we looking from? Where would you start? Are you talking from Desperado? From anyone Spielberg? really? Because because obviously if you've got this massive line of teams around the edge of the circle where they've basically spawned. So anyone that's outside of that line's got a really tough path to pick. In I suppose I'm not an IGL, but if I was, my initial thoughts would be okay. The, the biggest part of this, yes, you have circle, gears, weapons, or everything else that goes towards this game. I'm really keen on being able to take four men to the last mm. circle, keeping as many players alive until that very last moment. So you have phase, strength Phaser clashing with Knights. I just want to quote across. Phaser are going to go strange with Knights. And actually, this is a, a compound that we've seen a number of times. Uh, where people get caught out. There's Wanted comes around the side, but Fuzz was already lined up. There is only two members of Knights here. Reels and Snark are not in this fight, so this is a 4v2 at the moment as FaZe Clan will pressure this, and this is a big problem. Wanted coming around the corner. Mexi hits the dirt. Such a nice little combo between him and Uber to work that one, and now they know Drayden's there. Reels and Snark are coming, but honestly, they're too late to this party. Yeah, there's not a lot else they can do. The damage has been done. The noise location grenade goes up, so they'll wipe this. They'll claim it for themselves. We did say between where now they have pulled in up on the crater fields down to this location where fares are. This is your prime territory looking for these circle endings. I'll just continue what we were mentioning at the start of this. 
taking four players to the end circle, it should be one of the top priorities for these teams. And by doing so, you have to take a look at that circle. So for instance, if I'm Desperado's M47, I think I cannot rotate on the east. All the teams are going to yeah. be coming this way. So we go for the either option. We go towards the west. Looking ahead of where and thinking preemptively where teams are going to be rotating, where potential bottlenecks and clashes could happen, is thinking a step ahead of the game. Survivability in this game is one of the highest factors that any team leader should take into consideration when making a call. So for me, all these teams down south, they're going to go on the western road. And this right now is exactly what both Desperados and M47 are thinking. We want to go, we're down in the south, we need to go from the the, uh, the west, there's no point in going east, and that's why they're meeting each other. Desperados have actually set up on the road here. If N47 advanced further, we could see more victims at the that moment. That was a great nade. That was an absolute cracker of a nade. He bounced it off the brow of the uh, hill to bounce it around. Now he's got support, and yeah, Desperados got to back away from that one. Great play from Paige. Team Liquid lingering in the distance. They'll have heard these shots, so I did see a bit of a pause for a second. It might have been a scout and adjustment. Did Calvin pull up on this, or was he there already? He, uh, he was there already, wasn't he? Because he was going for the res when the initial grenade came in. Okay, so they follow it up. They've pre-committed to this. I'm, I'm actually a big fan. They, they've lost one player. Tom was pushing left. Sims is on the right. So this is going to be a double pin to move. They know there's one down, so Paige is either reviving or holding off. And you can see, we can see he's healing. But this is a double push. Oh, Sims is back to away. No, he hasn't. He's coming, coming around, around the, the exact same time. Sims is checking the support. They've they've single peaked it. I thought they were going to go for the pencil flank, and now it's actually cost them. Paige is doing a great job here for M47 to hold up. Now he's got support. Now Desperados are in a really desperate trouble. Ooh. Sims, he finds Ooh. two heads in a row. Vasco and Paige go down. Evil's running in from the side. I think his position just got given away by that single shot that he took. And now Simsy might have the better of him. He knows exactly where Evil is. He's pinned behind this car. That's just, just going to finish off the teammate. Trying to flush the points. Can't flush the points. Okay, Simsy knows where he is. No but so oh, Paige. The, uh, Evil catches the headshot and Simsy. Good Big. Lord. Anyone driving by, there's bodies everywhere. <laughs> the three versus one clutch would have been truly incredible, but the problem is that Simsy, to get those back-to-back -back headshots was, was fantastic, but at the end, he was working with no helmet. The bullet's there, he's in the ground, all four players dead. That's quite an early shower for the boys on Desperados. I kind of like the idea to come back and maybe fight this one off. Could it have been a little bit faster? Maybe. Could have, would have, should have. We can ask all these things preemptively. Yeah. Either way, they're committed to it and fair play. I'm all for it. You want to stick a territory, you might as well crack on. Liquid still lingering the distance ahead of all these. They've gone for the 2-2 split. But all the teams are kind of now getting close together. While all that's been going on, they've all been condensing towards the center side, waiting for this circle, see where it's going to go. Eventually, it'll pull away from the hillside. El Pozo is still that really keen, pivotal area because you can move anywhere in and around it. Just as a side note, Crow Crowd have completely left it. They yeah. started there, they've gone. Who's there? A team we always see there, yeah. NIP. Yeah, it's it, it's one of those things. Teams just don't like cities, right? Uh, and El Pozo, but El Pozo is a massive city. So we always talk about Los Angeles. El Pozo is pretty damn big as well. Uh, plenty of space in there. I think we, was it phase one? We had two teams looting there at one point. I, I think we did near the start of it. We get a couple of edge circles near El Pozo. I think Leo, Leones yeah. is the main one where it's like, okay, urban well, ending. They're, they're all gathering around the fields and at the moment because we have seen a number of circles there. You know, phases position, where Game of Legion are, uh, North where an AP are, the, the, the barn, etc. like the little hay bales that are in there. We've seen so many uh, finishes in and around there. It's also pulled a little further south of where phase are as well. So. Uh, teams are trying to use an educated guess of where this is going to go. It generally won't go into Pozo. We did, however, I think it was in Phase 2, you and Lauren had one in, right in Pozo. Yes, we yeah, because yeah, on top of the buildings, yeah. I remember where GMT was actually up on top and G2 won it. G2 meet one from the market. Yeah. They were yeah. actually posted in the market, so it does happen. It it's possible. It's fixated. possible. It's a, a few things will change now and a few things will go out. And I'm, I'm only going to touch on it ever so briefly, but Dyrim put a tweet out today yep. covering 4,000 endings of circles and 3,000 point, I think 3.5k circle endings. And you can generally build up a picture and a factor of where these circles, not Polter, it's still completely unknown, but there are tendencies. We know the pull from cities, from water, from inaccessible terrain, and we can only best guesstimate where they go. We'll hold on this for now because it looks like TSM trying to get through the fields undefended. The back tower of Raw is out, but still movable. MBS gets some response, which gives him the covering fire that he needs to continue forward. 
TSM should be able to pull all four members in here. Seven and N47 as well. NIP and TSM, they've, so they're going in towards the edge of Pozo. Yeah, seven and N47 at the crossroads are going to clash as well. Here they are. Page looks like he catches Buster. Look at Sadovnik's position. He might catch Page out. Page already realizes the danger. Backs away from the hill. Realizes they've not got it. Now they're just going to have a, two, a, a compound fight effectively. If they can maybe get the ridge line, this could work out well for Page. Don't uh, forget about Ensley directly behind them. They're still yet to make an entry point on this road exactly where M47 is. Look at Evil's position. Oh, Ensley's going towards it for the scout because Evil's, excuse me, Evil is in a scouting e position to Evil. get a, a Evil. complete. Evil? It's what it is, what it is. Evil, Evil. It's what he, what he used to, Evil. What, what he introduced himself to me originally back at DreamHack when we were doing uh, the duo tournament. SKS many, boy. Many moons ago, yeah. When That's when we first uh, Double saw SKS him breaking onto the scheme. It was like, <laughs> what is happening here? Yeah, it's... Uh, it was amazing, but yeah, as you say, Ents have actually pulled up behind him. Now, he's pulled into a car, so that may give Ents uh, some information that they want to go for this. Page is on a massive flank. A big wrap around here. Here comes Evil to try and find the angle. Page finds one. Edelweiss down, and that means the rest of seven are separated from him. He's going to try and catch the crossover. He just got a glimpse of Crab as he went around the back of the house there. 24's there. I should say. Bangs it in his chest to at least force him off. If they go for the... Bit and switch double peak. He would have got the grenade. Nice preemptive grenade. Big fan of it. It's now come reels. Find six more into the confirmation. So the two players left for the Knights are picking up at least a point before going out on this one. Seven all trapped inside a building. Edelweiss still bleeding out at the wayside. He will probably go. Oh, this is. Going out like that is so a risky and, uh, yeah, very ballsy maneuver. You're putting yourself at a disadvantage and they're all They've committing all to this one. House. Yeah, that's, that's, this is... He catches a glimpse, can't get the head. That was so close from Page. They've already picked up the four kills, remember, of Desperados. This could be an eight kill for them. That's why they're going so aggressive for it. Look at this. It's bought time. Look at Vasco. Vasco. This is the silhouette of him. While they're so in focus on this, with the grenades, with everything they've been tossing out, they've made a massive error and let Vasco creep up on the house. It's a big lack of judgment in that, in my opinion. They send one person for the res, that's fine, but then the other two people followed him. That's tunnel vision towards your player. I get you want to cover him and give him cover fire and defensive stance and everything else that goes with it, but you haven't watched the front of the house. You haven't kept... It's okay saying they, they've let players get to the door, but more importantly, they haven't kept a track of where all the rest of them are. Look at that. Vasco totally baited that. Ran in, shot. He's like, yeah, they're going to throw an underhand nade. It may just run back. Keep them, keep burning down the, the nades. Now, bearing in mind, I don't think I've seen N47 throw a single nade yet. This has all been uh, gunfire. They've got all the angles. Really nicely worked from them. A team that we've obviously seen uh, have really got it in them uh, in terms of fighting. We see the circle ad adapt. You can see why FaZe went in and fought the Knights for that compound. It's still center point at the moment and has been for a couple of circles. Just been a nuisance at the door here. Trying to bring them all out, or at least bring them in, bait them into vision of his teammates in the opposing buildings. Now, how long do they stick at this? Because everybody's rotating while this fight goes on. So they're going to be losing position. But as we said right at the start of the PEL, with the super settings, a kill, a point can be massive. You know, 15 teams in there. If you die now, you get zero. Smokes are but up. if you get them all, that's four more kills in the bag. You know, eight points is a long way towards getting a lot in a game. Seven is committing all of the smokes. So they're either going for a massive bait here or they're wasting. They're going to lie them all across, so there might be some avenue of approach to that hillside. Are they going to go for it? If they do, it's it's wild. One team has to make the first move. Spots T-Bone. If he gets this kill, it'll be huge. Even if it's just a knock, it will do enough damage. T-Bone with the response, though. That's good. Puts them back again. The spray down. Doesn't connect for now. Damage is done. Vasco's here. He's inside the building. He's at the gates. They're coming down the stairs. Oh There's one. Word. There's two. Sadovnik outside. He <laughs> should get the call that is there. Goes for the no-scope. Seven is dead. Switches to the bolt action, no scope on the stairs. I like it, Vasco. But M47, that's eight kills that they have collected in the first couple of minutes of this game. Incredible. <laughs> well, they have turned up. They said that we're going to 24 they, on the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> no scope in 24. They said we're going to have a much better day today, uh, and that's what I like to see. So uh, it's nice to see a confident team that's happy to take a fight. I mean, they've they've been collecting a lot of kills on Sandhawk, so it's a, it's not surprising to see once they get into that straight up 4v4, no third party, nobody getting involved, straight up raw fight, they have it in them. They had really nice positioning, uh, flanking, etc. Vasco, my God, his movement, uh, and more importantly, Page baiting it, so Vasco could get that movement, get in position, then T-Bone with the flank, so really worked very well. 
I suppose the smokes also give an indication that they are going to make an escape path outside of the building. It's always going to be a difficult one when you're bunkered in like that, but you called it perfectly. There, there is a time where you have to move. You can't just sit there and like a wet lemon and eventually die. I think that was uh, probably what prompted Seven as well. It's like, yeah. we need to get out of this exactly somehow. Um, oh, Ents are going for it. They're just coming out of Monte Nuevo. Uh, straight barreling up the road. I think they wanted that compound just off, off the road, but Gamer Legion have Mackendark in there. Uh, he is the only man, but it's it's forced Ents uh, to back away. Now V, we can see, are pulled up. N47, where do they go? Sitting on the edge of the circle. So they pulled into the warehouse just outside Monte Nuevo. Uh, you can see Evil off in the distance. He is on the edge of Monte Nuevo. Ents are going to crash it. They've realized Mackendark is the only man here. And Mackendark's going to get on, literally get on his bike and get the hell out of there. The question is, will Squeaky catch him on the escape? The rest of his team are on the hill. Uh, don't run over Bjorn. He's going to be safe. And, uh, and to go back to Game of Legion, by the way, their fight with Navi yesterday, uh, Bjorn came straight up to me and says, we were not scared to fight. We just didn't, it just didn't play out how we planned it. My only minor concern for oh. them, they're in a really decent <laughs> position now, perpendicular to the circle and wherever else they could have rotated from. The downside to that location is there is bevels all around them. It's a nice little bit of a ditch, it's a little bit of a bunker, but the problem is those grenades, when you have several teams around you, like Liquid, there's individual players that I'm seeing lurking. They'll have seen the bike go up the hill and see uh, the same for ends. They now know they're there, they have the full amount of information. Any grenade that goes towards Game of Legion, generally speaking, should be connecting or at least doing damage. So. It's a good position, but it's not without its downsides. The downside of all this is that northern edge of the circle. Where the bloody hell the teams go? Now be yeah. NIP, G2, oh TSM, Crow Look Crowd, raise your edge. They're all moving. They're good. all they're all moving. God, N this is NIP messy. in the distance are in cars. Crow Crowd are in cars. TSM are looking for a spot. That is such a good nade. That could or not have landed closer, Michael. Menox goes down, almost got a second with it. There is the second one coming through. Menox is going to bleed out there unless he gets some support very quickly. NIP trying to make the move. G2 in the fields as well now. It is all getting very congested. NBS will go down, but it's quickly answered back and forth between NIP and G2, fighting out on the edges of El Pozo while TSM connect with Crow Crowd. That's the third nade for TSM. Oh, Lip. Michael, that's right on your feet. It's Good answer. a response there, like you said. There's an answer. He's instantly confirmed. They actually know. Phase are just third party as much as they can as well. Oh. This fight here is mirror image. Both of the teams rotated at the Miracle same time. They were generally one. speaking in the same area. You can see where Nellos, if you're watching the map, is up on the hillside. Pozo was where NIP was. They came for the last ditch effort. Let's get what we can, try and take those little sheds, shacks, whatever you want to call them at the edge of the fields. We can't go any deeper inside the circle, so we play with whatever we've been given. The last man standing will be Gaxi for an IP. There are two players that have to take him out on G2. Should they get this, the new boys, Yanis and Nelos, they'll keep G2 in the game for the next circle. Shots from FaZe is actually trying to steal away that Got kill. Him. And when they see him through the smoke, yeah, Gaxi will go down. That was Yanis. Uh, I like what G2 did, by the way. They left Nelos on the hill, so he was giving a cover fire. FaZe, keep your eye on the kill feed, because they are obviously their compound. They fought right at the start. This is what we talk about. The move they played was absolutely for a position. They knew it was going to go somewhere around this circle, and they are third party in like crazy right now. TSM and Na'Vi clashing in the warehouse. Na'Vi out in the blue. Don't have much else to play with, and they will go down. 13th for them. Uh, probably their lowest points. I mean, they were on 10.6 points for the first 10 games. So I think they can afford to have a singular bad game. There's potential here that TSM gets a little bit lucky and catches Razor Edge while they're getting themselves back together. R R doesn't know he's there. He doesn't know he's inside the cabin. Maybe, oh, there we go. Now he's opened the door. Yes, he does. He can hear the meds coming off. Gets baited out by it. One HP in a literal dream. Use the audible cue of the first aid and pushes it aggressively. TSM again are inside. Bjorn finds Nellos, that's out in the field, unfortunately. Oh, no, he won. He actually no, pushed up further. Okay, so they went yeah. for a 1-1 split. TSM again really quickly over in the distance on the west. They are pushing up onto the last two players of Rai. It's Sigzi and Linksy. We've seen what Linksy can do up close and personal with an AR. And I think now it's time to fight for him. Ooh. They are away from the circle. Liquid have gone for a very good 2-2 split. And now it's paid off by taking control of two different compounds. They now have a solid foothold inside the circle and potentially even pressure Gamer Legion, because Gamer Legion mm. are central. you gotta, you got to like the move that Ents forced on Gamer Legion to get that compound. It's looking like it might pay off here. Uh, FaZe are going to try and third party as much as they can. Team Liquid, as you say, they're just going to consolidate. And now we can see the team's in the north. That's the problem. 
N47, actually, while the position looks open, it's actually they've got a really nice ridge line towards ends, which is why you can't see them shooting. They're all shooting D8 in the hillside. Sigzi. My only criticism about this, Lee, is that he is staring dead at Gustav and not looking for anything else. Yeah. So the other two players from TSM could be lurking oh, he's around. Oh, Jabated. Yeah, it's one of those moments where you just hit the sprint key and you're just like, oh no. I've, uh, I've been caught out and now Lynx is in trouble. That's Molly's going to spread to the left, try and force him to the right. The nades will follow through. He's going to heal himself up as quick as he can. Rory tries to push the door. Is he going to need to underhand out of it? He's going to pop a smoke in the shack itself. Do they have any more nades? Can they nade at the door? I don't know. He can shoot it out and hope for the best. All the meds in the world that he's got left, the stims, everything will come off. Listen for the rattle of a door. Yeah, you have to Link be careful. See. Just, you got to shoot through the smoke. And this the this is his actual view. He's going to get the second smoke out there. There's the play zone. He's got to move now. He's just getting shot in the doorway. He knows he's got to try and get out the door. And we'll go down. It's just Iro in the end. We'll pick up the kill. But the problem is, that's not really done anything for TSM other than give them a point. Because look at Team Liquid's point of view. They're going to come down here. Liquid are not looking. Now they, they are. Now they're looking. Now they turn around. Look, hang on a minute. There's a team coming down the hill. And that's, well, they may have just grabbed the blue here. There's maybe play zone kills. Yeah, Rory goes down to the blue. See if they can pick it up. Dead. TSM are Stolen, gone. actually. That's that's split between uh, Rory knocks down to the blue. The only thing I would have said for Lynxy there, that was one of those prime examples where you could have, if you really wanted to, just die to the blue rather than giving yourself yeah, up like yeah. that. Three players outside. You've given away a point to TSM. Some people don't like it, but again, it is tactical. It's one of those decisions you could have sat there and said, well, I'm dead anyway. What's the point in giving away a point? Sit there, hope for the best. Fuzz face. <laughs> It's like Tim is doing exactly the same. As it's not a snake in the grass, it's literally a snake in the sand. Completely exposed to you. Point. How it. are you alive? Just use that. Oh, no, he needs to get in the blue. I was going to say he's got a med kit. Just go straight for med kit. No. Nope. Nope. now. No, he's up. He's up. He's up. He's looking. They're not, they're not looking. They're not looking. Run, run, run. Gets himself down. Remember, he course won out, won the one on one yesterday Let's to um, pick up the game. Quickly talk about who's got a hard run here. Depending on the circle, once it does come in, N47 is the main one. Who do you uh, fight first? You can well, they have to fight Team Liquid, right? Yeah, they have to go up the hill. Ends are holding them dead to right. Ends are actually holding two teams, so DA can't go anywhere. N47 are going to get basically bottlenecked and, and force an engagement up against Liquid. I can see Ibby looking this way on the map, so they clearly have the information. Jeems also now. Reads it well, but they're in the open. They're exposed to two teams staring at them. They have to go. They've got to move now. Vasku, you've got a 24, but it it's a good hit wall the of world. Smoke. It's a really good wall of smoke they've got down, but uh, the problem is they're running into an exposed uh, angle for Team Liquid. So have they got many more? That's the question. They have to really land one of those. It's the right thing to knocks, do, though, isn't yeah. it? Put a wall up to one side, and they've essentially stopped 50% eye line onto teams. Yeah. It's always going to be a hard battle against Team Liquid, but they've at least cut ends off for now, so they can try and deal with it. Yeah, it's the day. I mean, they have they have the hill and they have the, the coverage. You can see Gems here, and which allows them the privilege to do that. Sort of go for those spray down attempts through the smoke, which is what they're trying. GMT just has a little peek towards the rocks, sees a glimpse of a shadow, goes for it. And now, of course, they're going to start ringing into nade range. It's, it's a problem. Him, Squeaky snuck up the hill, is he, or what? Yeah, he's, he's snuck out. He's in the house. So he obviously, with the smoke's dissipating, he now has an angle for it. DA is stuck in no man's land out here, by the way. They've got nowhere to go. N47 still. Game of Legion have found Dimmit. They're it's, alive, uh, but probably not for much longer. How many grenades have we got on this team? I've already seen two committed to the cause. If this player on the left-hand side of Gemzi has one, I can see it swinging over. Lands a little bit too shy. Evil, evil, will carry on. That's uh, a fair amount of damage from Mackendack, actually. It makes you find Schoon with a grenade as reciprocity try and get across the road. And I was just about to say I was surprised they got across, but I, I guess they've smoked out the road so much. And now it is just hey, going to be a, simple nades. And that's the, a big pick from maybe to find Fex, because that'll be their next problem, their next yeah, objective, the to move past Game of Legion. If they can deal with Ivo in the back lines, get rid of him, get rid of M47 off the map. Jeans has now Ooh. fallen as well. That's really problematic. Game of Legion going to try and push it, no, because they're getting shot at from uh, DA, by looks of it, from down low. But T-Bone, last man for M47, can't do anything. He's just trying to med himself through. Get okay. Halo, Bjorn. Where's that going? Oh, he's gone for the rock. He's gone for the rock. I thought he was going to aim just turns like, uh oh They're here, boys. Yeah, I'm running. I'm running. We have to deal with this. This is your next objective, but where Bjorn's do you go? has got a really good flank angle, actually. Oh, no, but Uber sees him in the open. 
and he will go down. That was a flank play that would have worked so well and would have been pivotal in the fight versus Team Liquid, but instantly flushed down by Uber, who has been popping off here. And now Game of Legion turn around and say, hang on a minute, FaZe are moving. They're moving up the hill towards us. And Game of Legion suddenly realize they're the focus of two teams, two monsters. FaZe Clan one side, Team Liquid the other. Who do you fight? Einzi went for a quick maneuver. They'll have heard this bike, so they realize that they're on the hillside. Quick scout as well, good position, because it means he can watch the road. DA are over there, not really a problem. They do have two Mac 14, uh, excuse me, Mini 14, so they have to be really careful. They just don't lose too much health or even a knock because then it opens up the playing field for Gamer Legion a little bit more. With every single shot, more information comes through. Ents, they can wait. They know that once the next circle moves, Good. they're basically at the wit's end anyone up on top of that hill. FaZe just went to the left, uh, sorry, Team Liquid went left side and you saw him scurry back around. They realized they're exposed to, I think it was Mexi they saw down low there for FaZe. They thought, okay, we don't want to fight this other team down the bottom. Um, obviously going to have a very good eye that it is FaZe Clan now because they saw one of the Gamer Legion players go down. So well aware of what they're up against the other side of the hill. But the problem for Game Elysian, they're very much in grenade range. I don't know what they have. You can see Uber's tossing one out. That's gone straight to Hamster. Bye so bye. he's going to go down with that one. That's going to be the go sign. Team Pop Liquid flash. are tossing some as well. Flash comes in. Ibi goes for the pressure. Really nicely done. Molly goes out to Macandark. Macandark's in trouble and Game Elysian are going to fall here. They're going to crush. But the question is, who fights each other now? Team Liquid, they're both at the brow of the hill. 80 goes for the shot. Sees Jeems to the left. Uber manages to catch both of them. Actually stole the kills away. Managed to get Macandark and Hamster in there. And now the nades go back and forth. Team Liquid, I don't think they have many more nades to throw out here, which is why we're seeing FaZe. Look at Uber! Uber's just charging the hill! Uber's just going straight over the top and finds Ibi. He might as well crack on with it because they don't have no nades whatsoever. They committed most of it to try and take down what's left of N47. It kind of works. It's put them in this position now. Jeans will hit the deck back to back. Oh, my word. Good Lord. Okay, talk about being aggressive. Uber just says, right, let's stick it to them, boys, and crack on, and it's worked. While all this has been going down, by the way, they were in a terrible position compared to this circle. Ends have moved out of their little house. They're all coming up the hill, They're yeah. at the foot of the hill. They will have gear. They'll have bullets, bandages, Fuzz, Fuzz gonna see them. They'll have everything. Really good reactive play from Fuzzface to check it. But here comes the bombardment and the opener's there. And he's going down already. Now, I believe there is uh, an M249 in here somewhere. I'm not too sure. Squeaky though, popping off. That's a quick two. This this is the ends we uh -oh. wanted to see. The Metralius. Good old DA, causing problems from the back, of always. <laughs> they will get to finally taken down, third place for them. Faceline yesterday said they were very disappointed with their performance. I saw Fuzzy's tweet and saying we are going to be much better tomorrow. And I think they're proving it. They've already got themselves 10 kills, but they're down to a two on three. Make it a two on four because Mikas is back on his feet. Eight seat to the left, Uber yeah. he's out with the edge of the blue. That's quite a horrible play, really. Um, and when I say horrible, I mean it in the best of ways. Itzy is there to be a focal point, and then this will give the He's chance for Uber to step in and maybe hit them from the off angle. Here's the knife that could stab them in the back. They well, are playing up against the wide. They can't over advance too much because then they become exposed. I mean, Itzy would have just said, hey, there's just two of them gone down low, two of them on the edge of the slope. And now he sees another one on the top. So he's giving the information to Uber. He's like, Obi, you can move up. I may need support. I'm not too sure. If there's, if there's a position for him to come over the top, he sees Rustamar going down low. They're trying to get the central point. Rustamar's flanking around. Now he's got to the wall, which is still inside the circle, and that's a problem for Aitzi. So Aitzi's forced to back away, away from the ridge line. Yeah, but when you look at that, Lee, that wall really don't pay him that much justice because they're closer to the center. He'll have to move before Aitzi will. Maybe it's to try and get an angle on him. It, it prevents Aitzi from going to the left. It's yeah. as simple as that. It, it gives everybody from Ents uh, a safety measure to just back down the hill. Well, in theory, he's dead once this circle moves. In fact, to be fair, so the three of the lads on the bottom of the hill, they have to do something. They need a knock on this. They have to move up. Sitting back here, I get it. They're playing a game of chess and just trying to take one down at a Uber, time. But eventually... Uber's still not fired, right? He's still not fired. I mean, they'll know he's there regardless. They just don't oh, know where. Yeah, they see him now. Squeaky had eyes on him. The cop for him. Five kills for Uber so far. Just the mark being the pain. Eight seat. Now we're into phase nine. Now the center point is the key. And there's a pretty much a crate around the center which could come into action. Mikas and Trifoli are going for a push here. They're sneaking around the side. There's a nade coming out. 
There's a second one just going to be answered. Just smokes is all that's left for Phage Clan. They see Rustamar down low, couldn't land it, but Uber's managed to catch one. Thriftily says he's getting pushed. Squeaky from distance, can't get him down. Uber goes huge, seven points, but he's got two down. And that counts, Squeaky. Where's Rustamar? Rustamar's flanking. He's going towards the crate down low. So Icy's got to be careful of this position, but Squeaky has left in position. He sees Rustamar down low. Uber has gone massive for Phage Clan here, and this could be down to a two on two. There's a reason why he's one of the best in the world, and these clutch moments and situations are exactly why. He's been sat here biding his time the entirety. Finally, Rustam Ma, the backup plan. He hits the world. He's got the shot that's needed. Uber oh! needs to confirm this. He does. We're into a one versus one. He can clutch it oh single-handedly. All four players. Nine kills. But what an end. Look at that. I love it. Love it. The man that was the most successful player for the last two months proves exactly why he is hot stuff. Nine kills and a 2v4 versus Entz, but really, Aitzi was the anchor man, but Uber was the man making plays. Holy moly, was that a game where FaZe popped off? It's a two versus four scenario, but Uber just took them all down individually. He gets the double peak onto two back to back. Then turns on to Rustam Ma, who in, in theory, yes, he is exposed, but he can still work with the smokes. He just nails him at distance. And then you come down to that point where you're in a one versus one. Yes, these players are up. They've been here. They've done that. Hell, ends they were the season one, uh, excuse me, the phase one champions. But all of a sudden, your heart sinks. You think, good God, I've lost all three of my teammates. I don't want to lose this. And time and time again, teams unfortunately will bottle it, but still, Regardless of all of that, that man is a complete and utter machine. And it, uh, you can't underestimate Aitz's role in it because obviously he was the, the pivot. The annoyance. And Uber just crept in, crept in, crept in. They, they, and they realized, okay, we're in phase nine, we need to move. Center point's kind of in the open, so let's push now. So you saw Trifoli and Mikaz try and make that push. It's like Aitz is here, Rustamar's got him pinned. He can't go left side, so we can push him straight over the hill. Oh, what's there? Uber, hi, I'm in the ditch. Bye. <laughs> and he wasn't crouching, uh, wasn't lying down. He was just crouching, slowly crouch walking his way into there. I think Squeaky maybe spotted him because it looked like they popped up and saw each other. But that's literally the only time that he was spotted. So he really snuck his way in. Have you seen his movement? Like <sighs> when you when you look at him and how he plays, his survivability is ridiculous. A lot of these players are now coming into, you'll see a lot more drop shots where they just completely hit the dirt. It, it hides them. It, it, it kind of takes them away from being so exposed. There is limitations to that. When you hit the deck, your gun is limited to where it can go. If you move forward or backwards, it does pull away. And, We've seen certain teams sometimes bugger it up, to be fair, yeah. when they've gone down up against a wall. But his movement, his level of survivability compared to his shot is just incredible. And if you think back to the how it's evolved, we're going to go to the interview in a second. I just need to finish off because if you think how it's evolved, phase one, we were like, oh, Hope is making these solo plays. It's not really working out. And phase one, we trust him. We trust him. And if you think back, this has basically gone back to the old Pidgey Manotta, what he used to be known yeah. as many, many moons ago when he burst onto the scene in one PGL. What a performance from that man, Uber. Hopefully, he will give a few words this time because he's with Pala.